presentation is basically a 20 minute summary of a project I started about a year ago um, to examine a mass of PDF files that we had accumulated and to see what we can learn from them. I'm senior solutions architect with um, Data Logics, which basically means that I'm the technical lead for Data Logics support department and the primary lead for its PDF Java toolkit product. And occasionally I do silly things with the tools that I work with. It's silly, but you can think of every PDF as being its own unique pebble. PDF was born from PostScript, which was molten lava in comparison. PDF is a cooled version of PostScript, no longer a self modifiable but still with a powerful set of primitives to work with what can be used in different ways. Um, each PDF is unique, but their source informs their mineral composition, so to speak. PDFs come from many different sources and thus have different properties. Okay, if you inspect a PDF with a tool like Acrobat's Preflight, you'll be led to think of PDFs as trees with root and nodes and leaves, and that analogy usually works, but if you actually read the PDF spec specification, not too closely, but kind of tongue in cheek, you can also consider PDFs as made up of collections of tables as in a SQL database. Um, John Warnock, the man behind the foundational Camelot paper that started PDF, co-developed the Evans and Sutherland design system for producing three-dimensional graphical databases, both for a CAD CAM picture system and for custom built simulation machines. So once you start thinking of a PDF object collection as potentially a row entry in a table in a database, you can externalize some of this data into an actual SQL database so that you can do various queries to find the source of PDFs that might have the internal features that you are looking for. So let's look at a couple of collections of PDFs. <clears throat> Before we proceed farther, I wanna make clear that with this database-driven approach to analyzing a set of PDFs, we're essentially looking at document metadata in the broadest sense of the word. Specifically, we are looking at document metadata, structural elements of the documents, and third, exceptions triggered while parsing the documents. No page content is being captured in these databases, nor will we be sharing anything that might remotely be considered sensitive or privacy issue. We are going to be looking at two collections, um, one that we accumulated largely from offering demos of some of our products on the web over the past half decade or so, and as a reference point, another accumulated from addressing customer issues from the past couple of decades. <clears throat> we compare them by processing them the same way, capturing metadata, enumerating the document resources, recording the fields of dictionaries in certain arrays, and trying to use the toolkit, APDFL in this case, to trigger errors reading the files and recording which indirect objects and using which functions tr to trigger what errors. Not every file from the site can be opened by our toolkit, so these are automatically excluded. Certain ex encrypted files, for example, and damaged PDFs, files that claim to be PDFs but just simply aren't. Um, also, I chose to exclude XFA PDFs to examine them separately. Once we've captured the information in the database, we can compare aspects of the file sets with some fairly basic SQL queries like the ones shown here. <clears throat> On this screen are the results of running the prior queries against internal corpa on the left and the external corpa on the right. The internal collection has six times as many files, but on average, they're about half as small as the external PDFs. Note that these sets are constructed in such a way as to exclude obvious duplicates based on documents' unique ideas, but these are optional and no cryptographic hashes were calculated to bring that number down further. The one surprising thing from comparing these two collections in this way is that the external repository's percent of tag PDFs is roughly three times higher than the files from the internal repositories. The question is, are these collections different in other ways? In the charts that follow, the internal corpa will be colored orange and the external corpa will be colored blue. <clears throat> um, 
We're next going to look at the distribution of PDF versions among these two file sets by using this query for both databases. Every PDF has an entry in file info with a PDF version column, which we are grouping together and counting how many of each we have. The files that come from our, info, from our inside file set skew overwhelmingly towards version 1.6, which is a default for APDFL, while the files from our outside sources show more of a bell curve distribution with most being version 1.4. Okay, here we are doing a variation of the previous query for a different table, which recorded the identifier parts that indicate conformance with a number of different PDF standards like PDFA, PDFUA, or PDFX. Not every file is going to have these identifiers, but we want to see the distribution of PDFA versions for those that claim to be PDFA compliant. <clears throat> the dominant flavor of PDFA for both repositories is still PDFA 1B, though the outside repository seems to have more examples of newer versions of PDFA, both on a relative basis and in some cases on an absolute basis. This is in spite of the outside repository being one sixth the size of the internal re repository. As you may have seen in an earlier slide, both the inside and external repositories have over 2,000 distinct PDF producers, even though one again is about five, six times larger than the other. So which are the most common? This is another variation of the pri two prior queries. Looking at the doc info table this time, we are grouping producer, telling the count of each unique producer, and just looking at the top 25 of the most frequent entries. Essentially, the highest entries are the most common PDF producers within the set. <clears throat> looking at the most common PDF producers, um, our inside file set is skewed heavily with Adobe pro producers. There's a fair, of my, fair amount of that in the outside file set, though the most common producer is the unspecified um, producer followed by Microsoft Word, edging out Adobe PDF library. Again, these results are not statistically representative on a global basis, just within the file set. The same query run against the issue tracker PDF corpus put together by the Tika team is very much dominated by versions of LibreOffice. Interestingly enough, their set of, of 20,000 files, sorry, is roughly in between our two corpa, but they also have around 2,000 some distinct PDF producers, just not the same mix as here. Um, for my part, when testing some PDF handling code that might have a problem within, I often divide the testing into two phases. I want to run it against files that are known to be problem free, so that if there are issues with it, it's clear that the problem is with the code I'm testing, not the files I'm using as inputs. The next stage would be to test the code against the rest of the files to see if the less perfect files cause bigger problems than they should. How would you divide the input PDF files in this way? Um, basically, use as many of the API calls from whatever PDF library you're using that read from a PDF, um, as many as you can that fall into that bucket, and don't be afraid to read the same objects more than once using different API calls as appropriate. If the file process with all these calls without triggering an exception, it's at least provisionally error-free. If errors do occur, however, we want to know which function triggered them, reading which indirect object and what the exception was, so we know very specifically where to look when investigating the file further. So let's try and suss out the most common errors. I captured the error message for each error code in a separate table to save space, but to understand what each error code is, I need to join each row of errors with the appropriate error messages. <clears throat> From here on out, we're just gonna look at the external repository. Somewhat surprisingly, it had about the same error rate as the internal repository. Though note, this only includes files that weren't um, disqualified for consideration um, by our virus scanners and that could actually be opened. 
By far the most common errors at the bottom has to do with incorrectly tagged PDFs. Please keep that in mind for later. But the most notable feature of this list of the 25 top 25 most common error messages is how generic the error messages are. And so let's try a different error, a little different approach. Let's look at what functions throw off the most errors. This list is a little bit more interesting. The worst offender is a function called PDS element get kid with MC info, which is a function for reading the tag structure tree from the PDF. But there are a few other related functions for handling tag PDFs that show up in this list. Um, there also seem to be some issues with fonts and text extraction, some issues with images and color spaces. The next question is, are these errors widespread or primarily affecting particular files? But before I go there, let's take a different tag for a bit. <clears throat> with this query, we're looking for documents with indirect objects that, differ, that trigger different exceptions for the same indirect object, which typically occurs when the object is passed to a different function, which handles the object differently. On the next slide, I've matched up some of these errors side by side to give you a flavor of that. Um, essentially, it seems that PDF form create from cause object on the right will complain bad parameter for pretty much any issue in the content stream of an indirect object. While enumerating the elements of that content stream um, with PDE num elements um, gives us a more fine-grained picture of the issue. End of sidebar. Back to where we were on whether these errors are widespread or just massively affecting particular files. Let's consider the next query. So in how many documents did we see at least one error for a particular function call? Note that for the next slide, the list of functions is actually going to be ordered by count rather than function name. The sorting was done in Excel rather than via the SQL query, but for comparing the text output of the query against different repositories, alphabetical sorting of the function names actually works better. So that's why I sort by function name, but for the next slide, sorted by error count. Um, here the picture changes quite a bit from what we saw four slides ago. PDE num elements is triggering exceptions in most documents. Exceptions from this call most likely reflect problems in the content streams of pages and form X objects. Likewise, we're seeing word finders having more widespread exceptions and problems with tag PDFs drop, or rather rise in this case, um, more towards the middle of the pack. The next step in this projection is, what happens if you forgive small errors like missing required entries where you might be able to assume a reasonable default, for example? How does this picture change? Yep, too far. Okay. The most dramatic effect of allowing a relaxed syntax is on PD font get attr attributes, which, so on font attributes, which likely has a carryover effect on PD font from cause cause object and maybe on text extraction, although curiously, PDE font create from cause object exceptions actually go up on relax, with relaxed syntax. With relaxed syntax turned on, the same files processed had 88 more files where no errors were reported. The percentage of files with errors dropped from 5.4% to 4.6%, a decrease of about 14%, not bad, however, the total error count recorded went up by nearly 2,600, an increase of about 3.3%. Recall that we started looking at errors by straight error count, and it looked like the biggest problems were with handling tag PDFs. But as we started to look at how widespread such issues could be, various problems with content streams seemed to be more widespread across the file set. Where problems in content streams might manifest themselves as bad parameter errors in typical use, we can use another function to get more clarity on the error, and we can query the database for other files with other objects that trigger similar errors, and we can consider how to better handle such problems by looking at them, at all of them, as a set. And that is powerful. Okay.
What follows are my opinions or impressions from investigating these repositories as aggregates. Both repositories examined inherently skew towards being made up of stressful files. And in one sense, a certain amount of errors in the files that come our way is healthy. It shows that people are trying to do new things with PDFs, maybe not fully succeeding, but trying is important. I was surprised to find comparatively more tagged PDFs and PDFA files in the external repository compared to the internal repository, but I did not see many PDF UA files nor PDF 2.0 files, which is not to say that things won't change, but we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for when such files start showing up in the aggregate. Thank you. The original impetus for this project was to further examine the files that had been uploaded to our PDF Checker web demo. The original impetus for PDF Checker was to check PDF files for the sort of issues that our PDF optimizer product could address. Now, optimization has a specific meaning in the PDF world of reducing the size of a PDF by stripping it to just its essentials. But what is essential in a PDF document very much depends on how that document is intended to be used. Over the course of a life cycle of the document, different sorts of metadata might be essential to certain uses and then superfluous to certain other uses. We saw a need for an automation tool that could help prepare documents for these sorts of transitions. So for the next few slides, I'm going to discuss PDF Checker and PDF Optimizer in particular in a bit more depth. Um, PDF Checker is our free tool for examining PDFs. It essentially captures metadata about a document that could inform the use of our PDF Optimizer tool. Please feel free to download it for free from our web store to try against your problem PDFs. Or maybe better yet, try it via our web demo. Okay. Um, now the original output format from PDF Checker was intended to be human readable, but machine parsable, text-based output. But after I showed engineering the Python parser, I threw together to parse all the output reports we'd collected, they decided to add a JSON output option, which is now available in the latest version of PDF Checker. That should make it easier to write scripts that automate PDF-centric workflows, and maybe not just with PDF Optimizer. <clears throat> Just to give you an idea of how PDF Checker works, here's a little demo on the right side. One small correction to the slide, PDF Checker checks for the conformance flag of the listed PDF standards. It doesn't do a full performance check of each of these standards, um, but it does do an assessment for optimization, looks for metadata, does analysis of fonts, of looking for JavaScript and looking at the color and image resolution of the images in the file. Um, okay. So <clears throat> if you do find issues in your PDF documents using PDF Checker, you might want to address them using our PDF Optimizer tool. Again, the purpose of PDF Optimizer isn't necessarily to squeeze all possible fat from a PDF, but to allow you to specify what stays or what gets removed so that the file is optimal for your workflow. And that includes being able to save a PDFA version of your input documents if that's what your workflow needs. Um, so, yeah. So PDF Checker and PDF Optimizer are now bundled together, at least for evaluation. Try one or the other, or both together. Um, when you download, yeah, they're both bu bundled together. One of them you get a, for PDF Optimizer, you get a 14 day trial, um, but PDF Checker you could use well beyond that if you so choose. Um, and again, as I mentioned, PDF Checker offers a JSON report um, so that you can use it programmatically more easily than trying to parse it. Um, and please visit our 
web store to actually um, download it. Okay, data logics has been around for um, a good long time in one form or another. Um, established in 1967, um, we got bought by Adobe as part of Frame back in the 90s, and then spun out. And but we're still partly owned by Adobe, and we've been producing. Blah, we've been supporting the Adobe PDF library and related developers-centric products nearly since then. Um, Products include, um, besides PDF Optimizer and PDF Checker, um, Flip to PDF for converting certain documents to PDFs, um, PDF Alchemist for turning PDFs to HTML or EPUBs um, or the like, PDF to IMG for turning PDFs to images, um, and we also have the tools that I work with the most, Adobe PDF Library and the PDF Java Toolkit. Um, thank you, I think. Um, are there, I guess this is time for questions since I went through my material. Sure. <clears throat> Let's see if there, uh, so if you have questions, uh, it's a great time to go to the uh, question pod and, and, and ask your questions for Patrick here. So um, there are a few questions, Patrick. First of all, will mm -hmm. you, are you going to share your slides? Several people want to know. Um, I guess we can. Um, I'll have to work that out in detail afterwards, but yes, we can definitely air these slides. Okay, so um, if uh, I guess I want you to uh, post in the chat pod if you'd like to get uh, the slides shared with you, and um, and then uh, Patrick will be able to take care of that after the after uh, after we're done here today. So uh, next question, uh, let's see. Were there any, in your analysis, did you attempt any correlations between errors and PDF creators? Rather interesting question. I actually did try that. Um, it's not something that I'd want to share at a PDF association um, event because I want to be vendor neutral and that sort of thing. Um, I think you tend to see more errors for PDFs that do not claim a PDF producer, and you can't really go beyond that to know which PDF producer that was because they don't claim own authorship of the um, document in that respect. And so there wasn't really any clear indicator of one particular thing, one particular PDF producer doing a whole bunch of different errors. I mean, a lot of the toolkits that I look, well, a lot of the PDF producers that I saw um, were fairly mature. so. There wasn't really a strong correlation um, to be seen there, at least with these um, particular corpa of uh, files. Okay. Did you um, next question? Did you record errors in the XRF tables or errors that cause that, that basically trigger a file recovery? I did record errors where. Um, well, not in the database, but outside of it, I did keep a log file so that which files I could not open. Um, haven't really done anything with that in particular. That could, looking at those files and specifically, could be an area to look at further um, beyond that. Um, but a lot of the files that I couldn't open were either completely um, damaged or they were um, files that claimed to be PDFs but weren't actually. Um, I think that's so sort of, mm -hmm. I think that's sort of, um, well, an issue with um, just collecting files off the web so that anybody can upload is that you get a lot of um, people who are trying to upload garbage to see what happens if they upload a file that isn't a PDF. No, that's an interesting point, right? But 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 pretends to be a PDF, so to speak. Right. Right. PDF extension, but not really. Right. Um, let's see. So, what findings were you most surprised about? Actually. The amount of tag PDFs and PDFA, the newer versions of PDFA in the external repositories, um, it seemed to me as if I expected that to sort of be proportional between the two repositories, but it seemed to me as if PDFA and the tag PDFs were actually more prevalent in the external um, files that we we're getting from our web demos than they were that we we're getting from our customers. Um, 
it could be because there's a lot of inertia in our internal repository because we've been collecting files for a long time. But I think that um, PDFA and tag PDFs are actually slowly but surely becoming more prevalent than they were. Um, so I think that's an area that we possibly need to focus a little bit more, even though in this case, as I said, the problems weren't necessarily with all files as an aggregate having issues with being tagged, but maybe one or two files that had a massive amount of issues with being tagged, and that was skewing the um, error count initially until we started looking at how many files were affected by these sorts of issues. Right, um, right. Okay, next question. Um, will the Linux version of PDF Checker install on a Mac? On a Mac? Um, if you're running a Linux VM on the Mac, I don't see, well, it might work. Haven't tried it. <clears throat> That's not a Haven't scenario tried. that I believe we've looked at, so. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. See, okay. There is uh, another question here. Do you plan to analyze PDFs regularly in the future to see if there's, you know, to 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 watch changes over time? For example, the adoption of PDF 2.0. Mm -hmm. Um. This is a personal project, but I certainly do intend to do that. Um. We might maybe want to um, formalize it so we do it, and, um, do it. But right now, because it is a personal project, is basically when I have time to work on it. Um, I'm overdue to recreate the databases against our internal repository so that we capture the most recent set of files um, and lose the files that have been removed for one reason or another, um, just to keep on comparing. So. Yes, it is something that I'm very interested in doing on an ongoing basis in the future. I'm not sure that it's quite formalized enough to do it on a regular basis, though, just yet. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> next question. Have you looked at any publicly available corpora, or are you interested in doing that to flesh out your analysis? Um, I did look at the one that Peter Wyatt brought to our attention in an article from the PDF Association. Mm -hmm. um, blog article and that's I've I've created a database for that I haven't necessarily analyzed it completely I did find a few errors that could stand to be um, addressed um, and I appreciate the effort that everybody has put into it and I will do and we we'll want to give back in some way because I think it'll also help us in, in some respect um, have not really analyzed that database just yet, though. 